and we're recording. Okay. Hi guys. It's great to uh, see you guys virtually again. This is terrific. Uh, we've got a lot to cover today. Um, are there any hard? Just you guys, let me know what the hard stop is, so that I know. Five thirty. Okay. Because I can talk for hours, but okay. So we'll, we'll just be like that. Okay. Um, you guys know me. Um, I, I'm Jim. Uh, did uh, do I know everyone else? Um, no. Stephanie, I don't think we've met yet, have we? She's muted herself. Okay, that's okay, Stephanie. Uh, my name is Jim Douglas. I'm from OHO. Hi, Jim. No, we haven't. No. Okay, good, good, good. I'm from OHO Interactive. I conducted the the research for this particular engagement, and today I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna present the findings and recommendations from the research that uh, OHO has conducted with uh, with your users, and we'll we'll get into that in a second. Um, that's cool. Wonderful. Can't wait. I just resent it. I resent it twice now. Okay. Um, and my name is Eleni Sufilis. I'm the creative director at Elho. And my name is Jen Polange. I'm the project manager for this project. And I just joined Elho last week. <laughs> you just joined? Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Baptism with us? Yes. <laughs> By fire. Yes. Yeah. And I'm Laurel, so I run the membership sponsorship program of the Institute, and Ellen. Uh, I'm Ellen Chu, by the uh, Grants Administration and Project Manager. And Jeff, you want to say hello to Jen? Yes, hello. <laughs> hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm actually having a little difficulty hearing folks, so we may need to move you closer to the mic, wherever that is. OK. Jeff, can you hear me OK? Yeah, you sound great, but the a couple of the other folks okay. faded. Maybe what we do is if we're talking and the important you can plug the yeah. computer. Yeah, sounds good. We can repeat. Are, are we going to? What we'll do, I hope, is ask short questions. Are we waiting for Margaret, or should we'll I go? Let's keep going. Okay. Did you send it to her? She's just wrote me back. I have one of those to do. Um, Let's check her email. Is there a way to? Can we give it to you? It may yep. be that, that they can invite. Um, um, you can do it from here. Who Go down has to the invite. Jim, maybe you... attendees right here. Go over here. Um, and a, and just let me get rid clear of this. that. Clear that. Yeah. Don't don't get rid of the screen. Just oh. just uh, negative yellow. Just yeah. put the yellow. There we go. Okay. Now come over here and invite. it says invite others. Yeah. Now copy that the email. Okay. Now, what is, let's just get her email address. I get another one. Let's send it all to all of her email addresses, okay? Um, so you've got, you've got, um, did you send it to Margaret at the Institute or Margaret at Wellco too? Margaret at the Institute. No, it's Margaret at Wellco too. So it's both of them okay, at the same good. time. Okay. <sighs> is our Institute one? Jeff is well. director of education. Business development. Carol's the executive director. Stephanie is man education and marketing manager. Ellen is grant coordinator and project. You like double me. <laughs> <laughs> and Margaret is co director. Is this recording on? Okay, so you guys have seen this screen before. It's the idea that uh, you guys will have a unique value proposition and your members have needs and where they meet is complete member satisfaction. Uh, we talked before about your unique value proposition. Uh, examples, the most trusted, the most popular, the highest quality, the most entertaining, the best value, the best fit. I spent a lot of time talking to your, your users, your, your members, and trying to figure out what that unique value proposition is, and I'll be sharing that with you in a minute. We also looked at the competitive landscape and asked the, the people what was out there. And we discovered that the International Coach Federation is really your only competitor for the people that we talk to in the group. And I think it's a pretty strong representation. I have some statistics on the involvement in the other organizations as well, and you'll see that in a few minutes. But really, they're, they're, the, they're the other big player that we have to be conscious of in the minds of your members, your LAPS members, and your prospects. Um, I looked at them and what their unique value uh, proposition is, and that's yours, here, I'm sorry, right now, what your unique value proposition is, is your Harvard affiliation. 
was the number one thing, that and, uh, and McLean, it was the number one, the two number one and two things in people's mind when they talk about you guys. That's where your unique value prop is. Your conference is the other big thing. Everyone um, I talked to, I, I would say about 80% of them got to know you through your conference and that's how you built the relationship and that's how you converted them into members. And then also your, your membership, there's a little bit of clout there too based on the association that, that you guys have with McLean and also Harvard, and also some of the people you have on board are also, they're kind of big players, and so they're, they're known. That's your unique value proposition as it currently exists right now. Now we're gonna change that, okay? Because you, we can do better, okay? <laughs> so let's look at the International Coach Federation and look at what they have. Uh, they have a geographic network. They have all over the place. You, you dial in there, you can put in your, your state or your locale, there they are, they have these networks. Um, they also have accreditations and certificates. That's also very important, they have courses. They offer a lot of self-promotion and they also have lots of good resources there as well. So um, when you compare the two organizations, they've, um, they're going after, they have more. They do not have your name and your brand with Harvard and McLean, but they, are, they do have a lot of other things as well that you guys don't have at the current, as the current name exists. Now that doesn't mean that you don't have them in your offering, it's just that it's not being spoken to your members and also to your prospects. So we've got to figure out how to bring those messages to the fore. Now when I look at you guys where, uh, this should say unique value proposition next, instead of now, okay? So when I'm looking at this, you're, all the stuff that's in yellow we've talked about, what we really need to bring out to the fore are your resources. We need to figure out how to make your network or your members geographic networks. And that's pretty easy, but it has to be done very, very quickly, okay? We need to figure out how we can, you can help your members promote themselves much more effectively because that's what your competitors are doing and that's where they're beating you in that. Now, as far as your accreditations and certificates, we'll talk about your certificate right now. So currently it's you buy your certificate, basically, when you buy your membership or that's what it looks like on the site. So we had to talk about the value of that. And your courses right now, um, they're hidden on the website, and I'm not sure exactly if they lead to accreditation or not, and what the value of those courses are. You're not speaking succinctly about the value of those courses. So it's not a unique value proposition yet, but again, we can turn that around, okay? So, uh, what we were looking at is uh, we kind of looked at all these things, and again, the, uh, uh, for the mission. And currently on your site, right on your homepage, your mission is, our mission is to build the scientific foundation and best practices of leadership, wellness, and personal coaching. And then we met a little while ago, and we came up with something that was a little bit more robust, a little bit more detailed. And I'm sure you guys, and that's the second paragraph right there, and I'm sure you guys have been finessing that one as well. So. When you have something that you really like, let me know what it is so that when we're going forward, I know that we're aligned with your mission and currently what we have intended for you. But the idea is we are a network of top coaches committed to the practical applications of coaching research and theory. The ICPA is dedicated to raising the bar of coaching by providing top tier resources to professional coaches, future coaches, and those who would benefit from coaching skills. This world leading organization was founded in 2007 by entrepreneurs, coaches, and philanthropists at the at McLean Hospital, a Harvard Medical School affiliate. Okay, that's where it's standing, it stands right now, but let me know as you start to wordsmith that and refine that where that's going, okay? I took all your clients. Okay, yeah. everyone would do that. Yeah. Okay, also, um, what we were looking at before, and we, we, we talked about your business goals, promote, grow, and economize. And we kind of spent a lot of time, I won't spend a lot of time on that. And we also actually put the goals down, we prioritized them, and we actually have metrics that you could use to figure out if you have reached your goal or not. And again, we are very concerned about the, the retention of, of members, which is low now. We want to change that. We want to increase your membership level, and we want to increase your attendance at uh, your, your various uh, uh, your, your conferences and your seminars. Increase your sponsors, and then your promotion. You want to gain uh, higher visibility in the coaching community, and also uh, help uh, promote coaching in general. So again, we looked at the business goals, the user needs, 
uh, the, the best websites and portals are where the business goals and the user needs meet, where they're consolidated. Uh, when we are looking at your coaches, there are a bunch of different ways of segmenting your coaching population. One would by, be by discipline, other would be by education, accreditation, affiliation. There are a lot of different ways of figuring out how to segment your users. Now, what we did is we made sure that when we were going to interview these people, your, your user, your user base, your, your um, current, uh, your prospects, and also your lapses, we wanted to make sure that they, we got all these squares kind of covered, okay, in there to make sure that we weren't leaving anyone out. Now, so for the survey, we, went to, we sent out a survey again to your, your current members, uh, all levels of your current members, and then your lapse members, the people in the last year who have not signed up again, and also you have a pipeline of prospects. Now, we got some really great results. I, anytime I do another survey, I want to survey a coach because they participate much more. Than it. I mean, we had a really high return rate on people who are actually responding, which is fantastic. So we got some really great numbers, and I think they're so, they're because they're so high. I think they're they're um, they're significant. They're accurate is, is what I'm trying to say because we have we have enough uh, we had enough people. So it looks like we had a lot of prospects, a lot of current members. And I was surprised by the last members who wanted to speak with us. Of course, that list was much smaller, but it was a good mix. Now, when we looked at the uh, male-female, uh, this seemed to kind of reflect your general trend in, in the market as, as more coaches are female than male, perhaps, with your, within your organization. So this is what it looked like as the combined. 74% uh, female, 26% male. And that kind of... Uh, as far as the currents, the laps, and the prospects, that also kind of held that general kind of uh, proportion. Interesting that that isn't matched in our fellows. Okay. Our fellows and men are more male. Okay. That's so interesting. That, that makes a difference in terms of outreach. Okay. Uh, then the affiliation level. Here we have, uh, you know, the members versus fellows versus the affiliates. Now, I, it's going to be very important that we look at the orange on each of these, okay? The orange is that they're unsure. These are people that when we asked them what their membership level was, they could not tell me what it was. When I spoke to them even afterward, I asked the same people because I had, I, I ran a, a, a bunch of, um, I can show you, like everyone, where did I put them? It's in the neoprene, here we are. Everyone that we interviewed, I cracked, and I had a record of everyone I was talking to so I could really adjust what I was speaking to each person so I knew all their statistics. So I made it a point to ask the people who did not know their membership level why that was, and they said that they just weren't sure that it, it was confusing to them, um, and uh, they just didn't know. Even after I asked the, you know, I thought that would trigger people to go back before the session and see what their membership levels were. They didn't. They just, they were a member or non-member. That was mentally what they were all about. And that was for 16% of those years. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Now, um, you'll see that um, the, they're color-coded by currents, lapsed, and prospects. But I was also impressed by, we, we reached out to people, and we got a good mix of, geo, of course, most of them were from the United States and Canada. But we got a good mix of, of people from all around the world. So we did make a lot of penetration in the survey, geographically. And then we also made a lot of pen penetration within the different disciplines as well. And here are the statistics, again, for currents, laps, and prospects. So we got a lot of good mix. Now, those are people who responded from a large... From the survey. From the survey, from the hundred and... Pick the survey from... From you guys. These okay. are from your list. It's not... We didn't go out to a general. I didn't do any recruitment that was outside your list that you gave me. Okay, great. Um, internal versus external. Most of them are external. And then I was also impressed by the, the uh, percentage of years that they, um, so we got a good mix of newbies. The students were the ones that were in the they were just they were just graduating all the way through more than 10 years. And if you guys want to at any point uh, have me do some cross tabs against different segments, I can run the report so that you can see those. If you'd like me to do that, I can do that for you. Okay. I did uh, I did some cross tabs on my own just to make sure that my findings were 
were were uh, real, you know, were really accurate. But if you guys want me to do more, that's fine. Now, here's the competitors. The International Coaching Federation, way out ahead of everyone else. Now, what I was also impressed by is look at the nun. Okay, you've got people who your 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 number one competitor is the International Coaching Federation, but the other your number two competitor is the nun. Okay, so these are people who they're not used to it, and this kind of reminds me that your 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 profession is in the infancy in, in its infancy, right? People aren't really sure. Um, the fact that you don't have a lot of strong competitors, I think, is just fantastic for you guys because you can go after International Coaching Federation and beat them. Okay, this is, you really have a great opportunity here because look at all the nuns or the others. And that was, they couldn't, a lot of them couldn't even tell me what organizations they belonged to because it was a little hazy in their minds. But let me understand one thing. Okay, so it's the, um, what this is, is people who belong to our organization also belong to these others. That's is one, that, one? that is the currents. That's the currents. That's okay. the blues. Okay, so the now blues the are and all. Yeah, the yeah. last. Now look at these prospects. People who are in your pipeline, but are not your members, again. So about 25% of them belong to ITF, but not us, but 60 3% of them belong to nothing, which yes. is great. Okay. Yes. So there's lots of really great opportunity. Uh, Jim, uh, Margaret here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I, I just want to suggest in terms of framing International Coach Federation, um, I think we should be looking at them as collaborator and, and not as just competitor. We have collaborative conversations going with them. We have good relationships. They do different things. Um, so I think we want to be thoughtful about, you know, I think it's the wrong energy to send out that we're trying to, you know, outdo ICF. They, I was just at their coaching science event and the thing that, and I, I presented actually the major talk of the event. And the thing that I took away is that their audience is a, a, a level below ours in terms of sophistication, a big noticeable level below their, way less intellectually interested. They're, they don't really uh, even really have a sense for where science continues. It's just a different audience and with, with different marketing um, needs. So okay. um, So I think, I, I think it's a good idea for us to be, you know, uh, seeing them as a part of a field that we want to add to and, and we want to grow. And I think there's an opportunity um, with the right approach to have them uh, help sell our membership because they're never going to have the deep dive science resources that we have. But they just hired a director of coaching science. Okay. Um, and um, and so they're moving in that direction. And you know I don't think they're going to have the brand that we have by any means. So um, so I think we need to see them as. That, thanks a lot, Margaret. I stand corrected, and I'll try. You, it's hard to teach an old marketer new tricks, and you know, so I always see things in a competitive landscape. But um, they, I, I will tell you that your users did not necessarily differentiate too much between you guys and and the other organization. Um, they, and like I said before, your unique value prop was your affiliation with Harvard and McLean. So it was it was a little bit more. So I totally agree with all that, and I'll try to. Uh, I'll try to modulate my language for you, okay? Let's go oh, right here. Let's go right. Oh, did I just skip one? Sorry, guys. Okay, so yeah, so this, uh, the statistics about who people, uh, ones actually attending conferences and seminars, we got people who were very active, but again, there are some people who never attend. And again, here are the webinars. Uh, more people have never kind of attended a webinar here in, in some cases. And then how many times they visit a website designed for professional coaches. And here I was really surprised by people who go a few times a week. And that is consistent with currents and lapsed and prospects. So even, and when I did a, um, when I did a survey, when I did a cross tab to see who was more experienced, I thought they would not visit websites as much because they had more, there were more on their game. That wasn't the case. They do have a need to go to websites and to do research. And we don't know what websites they go to. Um, I asked them some of the questions. It was, 
it was displayed in their membership levels as well. They will do a lot of um, freebase foraging. They will type in a topic and it doesn't matter where it comes from and they don't remember where it came from. Right. If it speaks to them, they will use it. So that's, so that's the other thing. If we had a lot of topics on our home page, they would show up more? I wouldn't put them on your home page. I would, but we do have they somewhere. Would, they would show up if, if, we, if we had more information on topic. Yes. And if it was actually organized by topic, it would be much, much better. Um, here we go with the satisfaction ratings. People generally are satisfied with your organization, not so much with the website, so you did take a hit of uh, you know a few percentage points. I'll get you the numbers. It doesn't look like right here because it's, but it does, it's, it's significantly less. Now this is about what, this is kind of an important thing to look at. I've got three different graphs here about what their priorities are, their feature uh, preferences are, and this was interesting. There was a huge difference between the survey and after I started talking to people about how their preferences shifted once they started really analyzing what they were looking for. And in these cases, in the next three that I'll show you, you'll see that the information, and this right now is for currents, the information on uh, just the information, like resources about how to become a better coach, they were very, very, very uh, desired, much more so than some of the other things, like when you looked on here, coaching blogs, discussion forums, member profiles, affinity groups, those were the, and online polls, those were less valued than the general information, with some exceptions here. And we'll look at right here, calendar of coaching conferences and events is high up in the list of your members, okay? That isn't so high up in the list as some of the other types. But here, when you look at them, up here, all of these tend to be information driven about how to make yourself a better coach. Then they convert into networking and self-promotion, okay, for preferences. Now, this is on the survey. That is not the case when I did the focus group, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Now, when you look over here, again, for the last members, they calendar floats down here because they're not as engaged in things. They're, they're kind of lack of organization. They're not quite as engaged. But the information on how to be a better coach and the resources, they're again high. And then when you look at the prospects, calendar comes back up there because they're trying to figure out how to be better. They're trying to start networking. They're, they're a little bit, uh, the prospects tend to be younger in their career. In their career. Okay. Now, uh, so those were the, the feature preferences. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the people that we talked to. Uh, we spent a lot of time going through the surveys and figuring out targeting people for the focus groups that represent. Uh, your organization. So in most cases, we try to follow your gender, uh, your gender proportions here. You can see at the top there. Then we also try to get a good mix of specializations and practice fields and geographic mix, experience levels. With the geographic mix, we erred towards more variety in geography than, you know, in your, in the proportions that came, but I thought that was valuable to find out for you guys because that you are trying to penetrate other, uh, other, other markets and other geographies. And then we looked at the experience levels and education certification, those, so we got a great mix. Uh, the special qualifications, we wanted to get people who were more engaged and in, in looking at uh, the web and using the web, so we erred towards people who were more engaged because we thought that that would be the group who was gonna use these tools more often than not. And uh, we wanted to look at people who are more likely to attend conferences and seminars. But we just did that a tiny bit. I always made sure that we had someone in there who was didn't want to use the website or never wanted to go to a conference or a webinar to see what we could do to kind of convert them, okay? And here's an example of, that's Nicole and Jim right there. They had left their, their camera on, so I got a chance to get a glimpse of who they were, which was nice. Now we're gonna talk about personas. Now you create personas, and I said this last time, so that you're not marketing to everyone on the earth, you know, piecemeal. Uh, you create personas so that you can figure out how to target a particular segment and custom messages and appeals that go out um, that are customized to those people and um, speak directly to them as a group. They think you're speaking to them specifically, but you're creating personas so that you can do that. And I'm sure coaches do that a lot, creating personas. So you guys, I'm sure get it. Now in this case, personas, every time I do them, I do them slightly differently depending on who my client is. In this case, when I was looking at personas and how to figure out how to segment them, I look by segment, their needs, and also their engagement levels, which were very important uh, because, well, I'll show you in a second. 
Um, and you've seen these before again. Uh, when I looked at the personas, demographics, psychographics, firmographics, and behaviors and preferences is what I was looking at uh, as I was talking to them and also kind of putting them through the persona grind mill. Now, as far as the needs, now, uh, the identity. There's a bunch of different ways of segmenting, and most people, when they're segmenting, think of identity alone. Here we use titles. You could do that. You could use areas of interest. Or you could also look at you know, your fellowships and their membership fellowships to figure out how to segment. Um, but in each case, what I did is I took all these, different and, uh, all these different identities and looked at their needs, and I was able to create this needs list. I need to improve my capabilities. I need to promote my practice. I need to promote my publications. I need to promote my professional engagements. I need to be accredited. I need to gain stature in the field. I need to know what's hot now in the market. I need to meet people who are just like me and network. I need to share an experience I've had. I need to find out what's happening and when, you know, like the calendar. I need information on the particular issue I'm facing. So those are their primary needs, regardless of how we're segmenting. Are these in order of um, magnitude? Or I, I would say that right now, it depends on the segment. So okay. this was uh, or the persona that we're going at. So what I've done right here is, if I were going to do it generally, I would say that I need to know about how to improve myself is, is at the top of the list. And then I need to promote myself is in the middle. And then I need to know when things are happening that would be below. But on a persona by persona basis, those priorities change. And I'll show you. I've created a persona for each of the different ones, and I'll be able to talk to that. Now, each of these needs match up nicely with features on a website. And that's what I've done with the third column over here, which is blogs, discussion forums, webinars, courses, peer reviewed journal articles, online bookstore, calendar of coaching conferences and events, grant information and applications, online polls, where you guys can read them. They're all listed right in there for the, for the different features that you could possibly have. And, and you know, we may invent one as, as we talk today, a new feature, if, if, if we can kind of figure out something that kind of uh, grabs you and, and kind of um, brainstorm, you can brainstorm and figure out a new feature, but we'll, we'll keep on going here. Now, when I looked at the, the needs, I started kind of massaging them into different groups. The top level, news, events, and advocate. I'm, I'm calling it an advocate. I don't know. This is... Um, this is the desire to have someone, because it is a, a, a field in its infancy. They desire an organization to make them legitimate, okay? And that's what I call being an advocate right there. That's a need. They, they're looking for someone to advocate for them, okay? And down over here, education, networking, and promotion. Now, the reason why I have these two right here, these up here are should be, just be standard features, right? You guys should always have this. Any coaching website would have this. A public facing coaching website needs news, events, and they need to be advocates for coaching. Now, these down here education, networking, and promotion all of a sudden these take on a different value. People don't see them as necessarily being free. Okay? This up here, these are freebies, right? Anyone should have this. Down here, all of a sudden, this information about education, I need to find resources that will help me improve my capabilities. I need to be accredited. I need information on the particular issue I'm facing. Networking. I need to meet people who are just like me. I need to share an experience that I've had in order to help others. And I need to get advice about a particular thing. And promotion. I need to promote. I need to promote my publications, uh, professional engagements, and I need to gain stature in the field. All of these things have a different value level than these up here. Okay. So keep that in mind, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Now. When I looked at, remember the identity? We have these up here, the titles and the areas of interest. The identity, the unique needs and preferences per these different segments are all the same. Okay, whether you're any of these, uh, uh, any of the areas of interest uh, or whatever your title is, these are all the same. Okay, so your needs are going to be the same. So when I looked at that, if we needed to come up with a persona for, like, say, sports coaches, no, you don't have to, because they're just like executive leadership coaches in a lot of ways, and in, in the most basic ways of what their needs are. Sure, these guys probably are going to want sports articles, you know, particular to their field, but it's really not unique enough to create a whole different marketing persona for them. 
So what I did is I found out from you guys, from, 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 your, um, from your users, that when you look at this, the engagement level, so that your engagement level is getting very, very intense, going up, your perceived value is getting more and more intense, more value as you go to the right. So news, events, ad, you know, having someone advocate for you, that is, is trending this way. Education, the educational elements, that's a higher perceived value than someone who's going to advocate for you. And then networking and promotion are the two highest perceived values. Now when I started talking in the focus groups to your people about how they were thinking about themselves and their engagement levels, all of a sudden they fell into three groups consistently against all the different types. And let's see if that's on the next slide. Here we go. Um, I'm, I'm kind of giving the game away there. Let's take care of a second. <laughs> they fell into three types. These people wanted to remain anonymous. They want to just go searching. They, they want to stay on public websites. Okay. These people right here are willing to trade a little bit in order to get educational elements. Most of them think it can be free, but if they see something that they can only get there, they're willing to trade. Uh, their anonymity and perhaps dollars in order to access this content. Now these people over here know that this is a higher perceived value and they know that they're gonna have to pay for it. And they know they're gonna have to pay more than these people. All of a sudden people started segmenting themselves that way. So currently what you have is you have three different, four different levels of people using your website. Anonymous, affiliates, members, <laughs> Now, between the two groups, members and fellows have no idea what the difference is. Members, members. members and fellows, no clue what the difference is. Like the <laughs> <laughs> I can't upsell, Carol. I can't upsell. <laughs> now, right here, when I looked at like um, non-members, and I started looking at what's unique about their group, no, it's all more, I think, right, guys? You know. Non-members really only need to know what's hot. They need to know about conferences and seminars, and they need to improve their capabilities. We're not going to go so far because they're not going to trade their anonymity or dollars in order to get them. Now these right here, I'm calling them, you know, the affiliate level. When I talk to them, they were willing to trade to get more to improve their capabilities, and they're also willing to trade that to get accredited as well. You know, they were willing to do that for your competitors or the creditors. Then when I looked at the founding fellows and members and their attitudes about things, all of a sudden they were about promoting, promoting themselves and growing their business professionally. And also networking, engaging. So with that in mind, I came up with three basic personas, uh, three primary personas and six secondary personas. Okay, so let's talk about the first one is Annie Canales. Okay. <laughs> She is a coach who prefers not to register uh, or become a member. This is because she's, she's extremely budget conscious. She might be just starting out right now, or maybe she's been doing this for a while, but she doesn't want to pay because she knows she can go out there and get a lot of materials for free. She does a topic search on, on Google. She's got it right away. She can go forward with it, right? She's, um, uh, she could be from any discipline. She could be from anywhere in the world. Her experience level is either new or she could be an old sage, you know, and has it down. She's got her, she's got her thing. Um, she knows what she wants to do, and she knows she can use the internet to get stuff for free. Now, she uses it. Um, she has her own website that she uses to promote her, her own practice. Um, she goes to conferences and gets ideas. Um, and she has her own colleagues and her own network, so she's very independent. Now, her pain points, though, is that she might not realize it, but she needs help promoting it. Okay, because everyone always does. Marketing never ends, right? And you've always got to expand. Um, patients have a way of dying. We're getting better, right? <laughs> so, you know, you're always looking Darn. to expand. Yeah, right. right. They can do a good job. <laughs> no, the getting better part, not the dying part. But anyway, so uh, now for the marketing approach, let's look at this. Now, make sure that your SEO is solid so that she downloads iOS and SEO, search. Oh, search engine optimization. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Now, go and corner her at conferences. You know, that's because that's where you're going to see her. You know, and um, offer a one-year affiliate membership for 
free. So this is what I do is I would get an exchange for her when she comes to your website because you're going to be everything is going to be categorized by topic. It's going to be much easier for her to find stuff. Before she downloads, just say, give us your email, honey. You know, <laughs> we need to get that from you before you can download. You know, in some cases you don't have to do it for, for other things, but you want to capture her and you want to start marketing to her because um, she's she's a she's a lovely woman who needs to really promote herself. Promote her strength <laughs> through your strength and through your abilities. There's that. I wasn't gonna call her a sitting duck because I know that that would feel overwhelmed in this organization. So um, affiliate Arnie, okay. He knows he needs help on improving his capabilities and expanding his practice. Uh, but he's unsure about the how to do it. Um, maybe he's new and just starting out. Um, he needs professional development materials. Uh, and he needs to get his shingle out there and really start promoting himself. But he's worried about the investment. So, uh, and he's worried um, about the engagement level and what the return is. So, um, that's, he's very concerned about that. When I talk to people, uh, they expected the Arnie is expected to pay about $100 a year in order to get premium content that's going to help them. And they were using that as a stepping stone to kind of test the waters and see how well it went and how it impacted their practice and see what the return is. Uh, I said, what do you think the return is, will be if you, and they had no idea. They had no idea what the return is. Because on your website, you don't have a lot of testimonials and you don't talk about invest with us is a wonderful investment for your future. So we need more materials like that, testimonials and things like that on the website. Okay. Now, um, yeah, he's either new to coach, coaching or he's really conscious. Now, I was kind of surprised by, for the coaches, when I said $100 a year, that was a real stopping point for a lot of them. And I thought 100 bucks is really nothing. But these people are, when you think about it, they're on their own. They're, they have their own practices. Um, and they're promoting themselves. Uh, they probably have a lot of overhead to deal with. There's not a lot of safety net underneath them, so they're going to make sure that the decisions that they make are not going to come and you know bite them. So you've got to make sure even 100 bucks is going to be kind of difficult and challenging for people. He really needs to improve his expertise and grow and grow his practice. Again, make sure SEO, search engine optimization, is solid. So he downloads. Offer him a one-year affiliate membership is free. You know the first time, so that you can kind of prove yourself. And also make sure that it's economical. The next one is member Maria. Now, she understands, she gets you guys. Okay, she's heard about you for a while. She knows that she can take advantage of you and promote her business. Um, she's very solid. She's really, she feels that she's on the top of her game in her field. But when I ask these Marias, you know, who've been doing this for 10 years, you know, you're on the top of the game, and I say, how often do you use a website every week? So they're still refreshing themselves. They're still looking at what's new and what's, what's great. Um, she could be from any discipline, anywhere in the world. Um, she's established both who have approached with a successful practice. Now, she, her pain points, um, she needs a validator to engage with people that she knows are going to be worth your engagement. So she's looking for people who are experts, who can make recommendations. An example would be in your calendar. If you only put your stuff in her, your calendar, she's not gonna, no, she wants you to vet things for her. She wants you to put things in other, other people's events in your calendars that you know are solid because she will trust you because it's not gonna be just all about you. And she would wanna be, in, because she would see you guys facing out and partnering with other people. And she sees that as a strength for her own career as well. So if she can see you guys engaged in a partnership level of community, that's much better for her because that will bring her along as a member as well. And that will be more than enough to you know to compensate for the thousand dollars or whatever that she, you were going to charge her. Now she needs to put her shingle out there and be seen as an influencer in the field. So she's going to want to put a blog up. She's going to want to engage in the discussion threads. She's going to want to put a profile up there that has non-active links to her website and also her phone number. She's gonna put a video up there about herself speaking, you know, about how wonderful she is and how wonderful your organization is too. You know, she's gonna want all of that because she's going to want to really try to promote herself. And you're gonna support her and you're both going to benefit because she's fantastic. You guys are fantastic, and she's gonna give you a thousand bucks. 
Now the other secondary person. So wait, wait, the marketing was kind of oh, sorry. a stalker. Sorry, sorry. I like that. Stalker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She needs to be stalked by Yeah. Yeah, and she's a speaker, actually. Yep. Yeah. Now convince her that a thousand bucks a year is going to be great and it's going to lend her amazing prestige. And it's going to open her up to other people because a membership with you guys is going to be wonderful. It's going to get it's going to make it easier for her to speak at other conferences if she's a focus so she's really going to grow her own prestige, her business. Okay. Now let's look at the secondary personas. Prospective customer. This is people who are, I was surprised by this, because um, they actually think that people who need a coach who have heard about it are going to do a web search. And hopefully if everything goes well, they're going to come to your website. And they're going to go to your member list. And they're going to see that information. And they're going to call them. And they're going to say, I looked up, up at the IOC website and I got your information. All of a sudden you're proving your worth as a promoter to people. So uh, when I talk to uh, the, your customers, they said, yeah, people are going to come in from the outside. I want to put my shingle out and I want to use you to do that. So prospective customers are very, very important. You've got to make sure that you can find your, your um, members right off the bat on that website so that these people are looking for coaches and they know that Harvard Playing fantastic. I know that these people are going to be superb if they're if you're, if you're with that organization. Now, the media. I need to find out what's happening in the coaching world. That's pretty, pretty obvious. Over here, students. Um, I need to know what I need to uh, figure out how to promote myself after I graduate. And also, they're looking for materials that will actually help them study as well when they're getting their degrees and accreditation. Over here, now, I, I don't know if this guy actually exists. But there's got to be some kind of coaching vendors out there, right? Yes. Who kind of will look at your, so they can call them up and say, hey, I've got a new uh, website building tool that I've optimized for coaches. You know, how would you like to? Well, these guys, they're going to be out there, and they're going to be kind of trolling. You know, they're going to be trolling for your people. We've got to learn how to figure out how to deal with them, OK? Now, so are these guys. I'm sorry, not the competitors who are, who are partners who aren't necessarily seeing things completely in your way. Okay. We've got to figure out how to figure out how to work with these people so that you're supporting each other, and they must be stopped from stealing your people. Like if they don't behave as honorably as you guys behave, then we're going to have to figure out how to how to deal with them. And then the academics, they need to find out what's happening in the field and figure out how to attend a conference. So those are your secondary personas. Now there are probably some other personas, but between these two groups, I think we have a, a really kind of solid coverage. So, now we get to the findings and recommendations for your website. Now, the good thing I always, it, it's, your brand is superb, okay? The, what you guys are, your affiliations and your associations are wonderful. You know, the, the Harvard, McLean, everyone says yes. Head and shoulders above everyone else, that's wonderful. So, that's really great. Now, we gotta figure out how to capitalize on that on the website. Okay, because already it's right there. Even the prospects see it as a huge value. You, you have this incredible value, and you're not taking advantage of that value. We're going to show you what these things are. There's some brand confusion. When I asked even the people who had been with you guys for years what the difference between the two organizations were, now 80% of the people could not tell me. Even these are members who don't understand the difference between the IOC and the SBA. Now, one um, guy who said he knew later confessed that when I asked the question, while other people were speaking, he went online and, and figured it out and came out and was, yes, it's this. And I went, you this said, sounds, you studied the yeah, yeah, I said, this sounds a little too rehearsed. <laughs> yeah. So we know that we have that issue. Now, I know you guys are taking that out, and I've got some ideas about it, and I've shared with them before. I'd like to have you go with IRC because it's easier to pronounce an integrated coaching professional association. But um, most of the people that I talk to, Thought that this was the stronger brand, the general umbrella brand, the IOC was stronger. And that's how they refer to you over and over again. Few people said the ICPA. And when I asked them what it meant, none of them got the name right. Okay? Or wait, they wait, ICPA or the IOC? ICPA. They called it ICPA too. I did, that was so strange. ICPA. <laughs> Not really nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, I I I find it difficult to pronounce. I go, is it coaching? Professionals, or it's just it's the opposite of what it, you know. So just something to think about, guys. I know you guys are working on it, so just 
let me know what you, what you guys think. But it's, I, we're recommending one brand, one organization. Up for tail. Consolidate. <laughs> Down here, you'll see this before it's, you know, for what it's worth, that's my, my feeling. Go, 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 go back. Okay. Okay. Recommendations. Okay, so let's quite speak. To okay. that I, I think you need to consolidate the brands and go forward with, okay, it's the, I, uh, you know, the, uh, the IOC. You're a member of the IOC, and then you have two membership levels. So we have membership confusion, membership level confusion, and right. organizational right. confusion. Yeah. So that's and pretty problematic. They didn't. I was the only one. That's when I first heard, I said, IOC, isn't that the... <laughs> so. Okay, so going to market with one brand, and then... One organization, right? One organization. Yeah. Up the harbor to a claim. And then... When you say have two levels of members, I'll you're talking... That's yeah. where you're going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I prefer the Institute of Coaching brand. When, when you look at, I wish I could do a word analysis when I was speaking to the people in the focus groups, but I, I believe that this was considerably more spoken to IOC than the other one. And when they did do it, they called it the ICPA or the ICPA, and they couldn't tell me what it stood for and get it right. So that's the, those are the issues there. Right here, for membership levels, member confusion, like I've said before, they don't remember what their level is. They can't distinguish between the levels. And I said, I got to you type the word Flomex today, so I was very happy. So I put that up there, most of the comics. Um, there's little differentiation on the public site to actually establish those. Now, you do have one form, but that's when you logged in. It's on the, the portal that you actually have a page that describes the differences, but you don't have that. I could not find that on the public site. So it was very difficult to show what your current what your current membership levels were. And I feel that the word fellow is a little misleading because they're not typical fellows in an academic organization. So I think it's I think it's kind of a I would recommend that you reconsider that. And there's also kind of some confusing price points. They didn't understand the difference between your three levels and what they were billing. And the value was not communicated to them directly. And so I'm going to go to the pages now and show you what they look like. Now, this one is not on your public facing site. It should be. It should be, yes. No, 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 it I is It is, is on the public site. Down. Oh, I couldn't find it, guys. Sorry. That's, <laughs> the, that's the point, though. If you couldn't find it, it, it is there. But if you couldn't find it and you were looking, yeah. that's a so, communication. I love these things, OK? That's where the green, green is good, red is kind of OK. Let's think about it. Green, like this stuff, and you can have this, and you know, it's very easy, very easy to see all these features. Now, I don't know if this was usually when you have an X, it means no, and you have a. So we've got the, the wrong, the wrong nomenclature. So I was going, oh, no one gets that, I guess. And then I had to look like, oh no, they're when they don't have anything, then that's so it's something to think about. Usually, just do the checks. Yeah, right. that's a great point. Yeah. Now over here. I don't understand what that super year is. Not sure. It took me a little while to figure that out. Down over here, 10. 10 what? All the master classes. So you, you know, putting numbers in here instead of just checks is also kind of kind of mm -hmm. difficult. And then I go down to founding fellow certificate. All of a sudden this makes no sense to me. That's ongoing. I can see, so you're thinking it's an academic, you're getting courses and that yeah. you would have to take a certificate that, yeah, yeah now yeah. I get it, yeah. Yeah. No, and that's what they want. They, if they get a certificate from McLean or Harvard, oh my God, they put it on their wall. That'd be fantastic. Okay, but does it really mean that they've studied here or that they've done courses? Or does it mean that they've given you a hundred bucks? They bought it. A thousand. So <laughs> that... If if that were to get out, so you're you diluting know, the brand. If yeah, you're totally. just get if you give away if you can stuff, buy it, yeah, totally, it's not worth it. And if people know that, then all of a sudden that becomes very very not as valuable as you guys are valuable because you guys are valuable. Everyone knows your value. That kind of undercuts it. As far as the recommendations, we're suggesting that the three personas that I created for you, 
you know, will the two personas, well, because those of them at the left the should match the membership levels, anonymous affiliates, and members. Because that's the way they segment to themselves and when they speak into them. Um, yeah, there, that's that one right there, non-members. Now, they should be able to use the site, uh, the public site, anonymously. They should have access to IOC information that encompasses the events, the webinars, the calendar, um, information on coaching as a profession, and access to coaching resources. Now, they should only get a few sample documents, podcasts, videos, and webinars, but non-members should, um, should also have that, and non-members should also have access to all resource summaries. So give them summaries for everything and give them some samples for free. Uh, but if they want to download things that are of high value, make them be an affiliate okay, to access the full version. That's way, that, that way you can promote your brand, your, your information, and you can upsell to get people in. Okay? And maybe you could do them, like uh, an example would be, if they give you your email address, maybe you could even do it per month or something like that. They'd be able to give access to everything, but when they come back, it's like, your trial period is over. So you might want to do some trial periods as well. Now the affiliates, they should have access to all the IOC resources, meaning the, your information. Okay, they shouldn't have access to other things, but I'll tell you the resources, the videos, the articles, the podcasts, they should have access to those. This would include all the documents, videos, webinars, podcasts, and courses. They would also have access and add comments to the IOC blog but not be given the ability to post new blogs. Okay, so I'm suggesting that you guys have in the in the portal, the logged in member site, you develop a blog and allow your members to, um, for members to post new ones, allow affiliates to make comments or maybe not. We can talk more about that in a little bit. We're also recommending that the blog, I'll, I'll give you a, a strategy and when these things will roll out. Blogs and discussion groups should be V2. They should not be in the short term. Okay, and I'll, I'll explain they that. Be what? Version they should two. be in version two, not version one when we're going out the door. I'll show you how we're going to how okay. we make a suggestion Sequential. about how you, we roll these features out okay. because that's going to be very important. So um, their names should be okay. Okay, their names should be listed as an affiliate on the public site. However, they should not be given a full profile. So you can list their names of where they're from, but don't give them a full profile. So is there can... contact information? No, I don't think so. Okay. Let's 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 They sell. can't find each other. They can see each other and know where they're from, and then they have to do a little web search on that name. But we're not going to just give it to them. And that way, people who are coming in, who are looking for um, for coaches, they will go to your members and get their stuff because they're paying for it. These guys are giving 100 bucks a year. Give them the resources. That's what they want, and we'll upsell them to figure out. Listen, if you really want your, your contact information, we'll, we'll give us some more money, and we'll make you a member. Um, and they would also be given the ability to save items to their personal folders on their member site. Uh, so we can give them on their profile again. That's V2. If we don't want to mess with that in the short term, okay. <laughs> V2 would be okay. Uh, this is my profile and we'll give them a folder or a folder system so that when they see it, an article, they can save it there and that's, they can come back and it'll always be there for them. So that they will know, you know, a lot of these people have two or three computers or maybe they're, they're looking in their iPad, you know, their tablet and they're going to the computer or they're on their phone. It's quick just to save it to a folder and that, that's regardless of where they come log in again, they'll have their information. That's and great. The, and then over here, members would have access to all the materials. Provided for both non-members and affiliates, they would also be provided with full profiles, the ability to post blog entries, and view and engage in member discussions. Now, the affiliates were saying, no, you can't engage or view the discussions. Now, why is that? Because a lot of the discussions were anticipating they're going to be talking about their patients. And clients, we have yeah. Their clients, patients, I'm sorry, <laughs> clients. Uh, they're going to be talking about their clients. And we want to make sure that you know them really well and because you don't want to say, I'm having this problem with this woman from Arkansas who has blah, blah, blah. You know, and we, we have to have disclaimers, do not put people's names. But we want to make sure that the people who are posting to those discussion groups, you know really well. You know, you've seen their profiles, you have much more engagement with them. Okay? 
And again, the discussion groups are going to be two. And then also we're talking about phase releases. And I've got a, a graphic that will show you in a little bit. The reason why we're doing this is that the phase releases, you guys are a small organization. Okay, you, you have a small staff that's dedicated to doing this. We're going to roll these features out and make sure that they're solid in V1. And then we can add them as the years go by, you know, the next year, the year after, just to make sure everything is solid and you don't have explosions on your hands. Okay. Because even a simple, a simple uh, you know, launch is extremely complicated. So here we go with the features that we're talking about. Uh, the about pages, everyone gets to phase one. Coaching advocacy materials, everyone gets to phase one. Resources, non-members get summaries. Affiliates and members, they get access, that's phase one. Affiliate listing, here we got uh, non-members. They, they can view them, but they cannot list themselves. The affiliates are listed. Members get full profile, that's phase one. Full profile, they can view, they can't create their own profiles. <laughs> Um, they can view the full profile, but not have a profile. These guys can they have uh, they can view and they can also have their own full profile. That's phase one. Wait, I'm not understanding the non-member. Well, this is the anonymous. This they're, is your you wanna, conversion. They're landing yeah, on your yeah. page. They're not a member yet. You want to show them. You want to say that this is how a non-member differentiates from an affiliate. Yeah. These guys are the non-members of the um, anonymous. Could be anyone. Yeah, I just don't understand when you said full profile. Full like, profile. That yeah. means they can view yeah. other profiles. Like, can view like all now. Of your members. Okay. They can view who our members are. Our yeah. are and their profiles. Okay. Yeah. Great. So they can approach them. Yes. And, and their name won't be up there. The, the, their name won't be up there, no. So and the affiliates', affiliates names will be, only be, we're going to have a list of your affiliates and it's going to be their names. They don't get the profile. Okay, so instead of that being the same, that should be name, no profile, not view, no profile. Is that what you mean in the second? Right now. In oh, they're listed in the affiliate listing. Okay. The full profile, they can view the full profile, but they can't have their okay, own. Okay, I understand. Yeah, I think it was, I should have it. went a little bit too quick, and that's not very good. Uh, the member dashboard, they can't view it. There's no access. They can't log in. These guys will get that member dashboard on the portal. And that's what we're hoping we can do in V1. Now can these you, things. Can you describe to us what a member dashboard is? Sure. When you come in, um, what we're uh, on your homepage, instead of seeing the homepage that you currently have, yeah. for the member, there's a big blank spot when you log in to your member dash. It, it's just, it has some, like a picture and some, here we'll say, um, what we're hoping is that if it knows, and it should know the kind of your your field, it would bubble up certain articles that are about your field, and also bubble up events that are coming in your location, and that would be your dashboard, so that there would be some personalization on your dashboard after you log in. Does it say welcome, Ellen? Yes. <laughs> yes. Even if your name is Ellen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only if we make a mistake. Of all the ones right here about the phase and everything, I put this in one, but this we should put a question mark in here because this is going to be a little ambitious. Okay. And then just uh, blogs. Uh, of course, they don't have any viewer access because they can't log in. This is only for the blogs, discussion blogs, my folder, and certificates are only available for um, affiliates and members. It looks like my professor is like sending in here to send people in that one. But for the blog, they can't do no access. They can, uh, uh, they can view only, or we might allow them to do some comments, but they cannot post new ones. These guys just get full access. That's number two. V2. Discussion blogs, no view, no access. These guys can't even see them because we don't know them well enough. Uh, these guys have full access. That should say full access. My folder, full, full. And right here, certificates. we got to figure out what certificates mean to you guys. I, you know, I, I'm not sure how to handle that certificate thing, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Now, this is the markup on the public facing site. Brand, fantastic. <laughs> you guys are superstars. Okay, that's great. Now, as far as this organizational principle right here, we know it doesn't work. We'll get into it. It's very awkward. We know that doesn't work. 
Um, I'm not convinced the, your, your banner navigation is confusing to me and it's also confusing to your people. Like, what's the difference between IOC and ICPA? Um, and then news and publications, what, that's really not, that, that's a lot of your research in this last one years, you're kind of commingled and kind of strange to me. And our centers, no one understood what our centers were, and you guys don't have centers. So, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and this is, this kind of, what, what's this? It's pretty, I don't know what it is. And then right here, what's new? News is typically not right there. And your mission statement over here, this area over here is like the call to action areas when you go next. And mission statement, that's kind of inappropriately located. So our centers, like I said before, you seem to be, you know, the different um, disciplines, and then also a visitor center. It's kind of, doesn't, um, It's terrible, we know. Doesn't help us. We'll go quickly through this, it's painful, guys, okay? <laughs> yeah, don't make this, this so this painful. Is why, <laughs> yeah. okay. This is why we have kind of problems yeah. Yeah. So here we go, we know that that's kind of strange. <laughs> we know that this one over here, because you're mixing some stuff in here, resources is very, and joining our mailing list is strange. Oh, I love breadcrumbs. You can't give me enough breadcrumbs. Love them. That's great. It helps you track. I'm not sure what the relationship between these two things is. Is this subordinate to that? That's a real problem. The links right here, they don't, red is not a color that you should use ever for links. And then also, there's no organizational, um, there's no topic. You can't browse by topic or author or, you know, or, um, or uh, area of interest. So this is just, a list? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I love you know these you know because this anytime you can put a picture that doesn't look like stock, it's fantastic. That's a real person. Um, I don't understand the difference between uh, fellows and workers. We already talked about that. Now, what would be really great right here? What they wanted to do is they wanted access to this list, and notice that it's kind of hard to find. It's not really up there anywhere. They want to be able to come in through here and say, I need someone who's from California near Los Angeles, and I want to, I want to see who's local, and, and who's also doing sports coaching. And I want to be able to do that. So they want to do a faceted search to get those people really quickly. And I know you guys are tagging that information, so that you should be OK. Now right here. Now, this is, you guys need to use structured data with your profiles so that you can do things like search by location, um, their, uh, where they live, um, where, where they went to school. You know, so those would be all fields. I'm not sure where that is. What, yeah, oh, did I hit something here? Yeah. Definitely was wrong. Just a second. This is gonna take, um, Oh, look at that, I'm, I'm controlling your computer. I don't know why I'm doing that. That should never happen. That's okay. weird. Very weird. Let's bring this back over. There we go, go. okay. Okay. I've never had that done before, that's right. Okay, right here, so this needs to be structured. And down here, uh, uh, quick question, sure. how does that uh, become structured so that it's searchable? Well, what we do is we put it in fields, like um, education, um, location, um, your uh, uh, proficiency, uh, accreditation, um, uh, description of, you know. It's like templates. Yeah. 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 templates. Now what's missing here is like, great video of her would be wonderful. Also, her contact information is missing. That's why people were trying to figure out how to get a hold of her. Now, in the login state, if this were the profile, I want to see uh, I want to see your blog entries. I want to see your discussion streams, okay, as well. I want I want to see links to there to see how engaged she is. Also, how long has she been a member? You know, you don't you don't another structured information that you don't have right here. How about her speaking engagements? That would be wonderful as well. You know, um, I'm, I just I need more from Titania. And you guys have it. These guys are really great people. Although I want to say one thing about that, and maybe you will have a solution for us. 
some of the people we have begged them to write more on their profile and they don't want to. Oh, you know what and you can do? Haven't. You guys are all on LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn humiliates you by saying that you're only 20% filled. You know? Well, you, I mean, you... we'll even have people with no picture up there. Yeah. They've paid a thousand dollars and they haven't put their picture. And Laurel, we go and steal it. Find the picture on you. Yeah. And they still don't. Yeah. Well, okay, so we can do some incentives like like LinkedIn and say you your profile is only 20% complete. If you, you know, and, and look at everyone else. The public thing, so. No, well, not well, public. They'll be able to see in the public, but when they log in, it would, okay. I would put a ticker at the top that says a thermometer that says how far along you are. That's okay. usually a lot of incentive, but also you can just have a conversation with the more you advertise your, your, yourself, yeah. the more business. Well, currently, I don't blame her for not putting a lot of stuff in there because I can't read that paragraph. I have no idea who she is. And I need to do that instantly. I need to look at that and go, oh, wow, she's fantastic. So. I mean, I think there may be two categories of uh, members here those who are willing to be contacted mm -hmm. by any other member okay. and those who have no interest yeah. in all of this influx of content. We that's a really good That's a really, that. really good point. So we will have it, and we should put this as a recommendation. We'll add it to the mix that you can determine if that wants to, if you want that to be exposed to the public, to only um, members or affiliates and members is what we can do. That's a really good point. So the, the findings, the, the, the homepage is chaotic. There is unintuitive placement of initial that's not in the right place. The portrait stamp thing that I didn't really need out. Um, our centers is misleading. There are site organizational deficiencies, and I've created a new site type taxonomy that I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, there's internal structures. It's hard to do uh, like um, sub uh, sub navigational elements, and also filtering is also very difficult. Like if you wanted to filter by topic, um, hidden resources. Uh, the highly desired resources are hidden under news and publications. Um, hidden member profiles. Lack of topic search filters. Lack of member profile filters, missing profile content, and lack of consistent visual design elements. Like I said before, your links, sometimes they're red, which should never be, and sometimes uh, they're different colors. So we just need to standardize that. Alani will do a brilliant job of doing that for you. <laughs> and uh, recommendations from homepage design. You guys need, I, I would suggest you guys have an organizational tagline. I know it's not real marketing. You know, but it's something you might want to consider. You know, if you, you got your mission statement, and I know that taglines really aren't really academic, but. Hey, I don't, who, who said you have a tagline? Okay, okay, try it out and I see. I got a tagline, Carol Kaufman, I'm telling you. Okay, <laughs> right, exactly. But we can okay. all think of, of that, I do. And then I'd also add testimonials, and uh, resource filters, and search. So you're uh, filtering by discipline, topic, and a resource type as well. Um, include a coaching advocacy se a section so that you can see, they're going to be really comforting if Harvard and McLean and you guys stand up and say, this is legitimate. They're going to feel better about themselves and they're going to honor you guys. They'll be much more engaged. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm recommending for that. Include uh, missing profile filters on name, discipline, location, and practice, and other things as well. Wait, so ILC accreditation, you're saying that we should accredit, that's a recommendation? You know, yeah. We can. So in the, in the real world, you're saying if we had the flexibility, that would be. Yeah. Now you're doing these certificates that really are. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm going to um, challenge you about that. OK. Because for example, if you go to any coaching conference, you get a little Harvard certificate that says, I went to the conference. So, that's great. Um, but giving someone a thousand bucks just so you can put their name up there. Yeah, that's the what same. he's saying. We'll find a way, but you can say, yeah. but um, we'll talk about this later, but Jeff Hall has a whole new thing we're going to roll out about education certificates. That's to get something you have to study. And do what you years. could do, though, guys. I mean, it's, it's kind of, maybe you can say that to become a member, you go through a vetting process. And now that vetting what process could be whatever. Do that? I think so. I think it's even your value is even higher if you say that. If you don't make it sound really, really scary, 
but you know we're going to go because we want to make sure that our members are are of the caliber that we are and that are engaged in coaching that's something that you could do and the vetting could be do you have a last name and that's all you need but at least you know, at least you some, somehow could speak to that. You know, think about it. I'm not, I'm not sure if that would be. If it wouldn't be a huge amount of work, that would be one thing. Yeah. But, you know, to say you have a coaching credential, they could be lying. We would have to go to the organization, find out if they graduated. Yeah. That would be hours and hours of, of Yeah, work. He's, you're brainstorming right. ideas. Yeah. yeah. But a quiz? Uh, recommendations, uh, more, uh, member profile filters and uh, member profile content. This is what, just some of the things that I thought would be good and I'm sure we can come up with some other ideas. Guys, can I pop in for a second? Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, yeah we can. can, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm appreciating what you're sharing, um, Jim, and I think that, that the idea of, of changing the definition of a fellow would lend itself very well to that. So your taxonomy of having affiliates and members doing away with the current founding fellow leaves us an opportunity to perhaps grandfather the people we have, but also make the founding fellow something that people have to be certified for, have to be vetted for. That, and, uh, that, that's interesting, Jeff. And what to me that would be is not giving you more money, you would be on your profile, you'd have a tag that would say fellow or founding or you know special. That some kind of tag that you have. You, not only are you member, but you've gone through that extra hurdle um, to you know and, and been validated in some way. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that that's that would get to the issue that you raised about the fact that people are concerned about the way we dilute the value of the fellow title by having it be something they can just purchase. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now this is the taxonomy for the public site. Um, I'm suggesting that the, and of course we can talk about, and this is the primary is up at the top, and the secondary is down over here. And But this is not saying that that's how it's going to look on the page. Okay, this is just the document. But, so what you're saying is that might be our um, top navigation. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, so about us, your mission, your history about the thing, our team, council of advisors, scientific council sponsors, and testimonials are in this area. Coaching prime, I, I don't know what to call it. This is the advocacy stuff about what a coach is. I came up with a primer. Maybe you guys have a better name for it, but this is you know coaching basis. Basics, positive psych psychology, health, and then all of your different um, disciplines running through here that kind of teaches this is what being a coach is all about, right through here. And then coaching news, your news and newsletter. Over here, conferences and seminars, a calendar that has everything that you think is valuable, but also they can really see which ones you're sponsoring. Conferences, seminars, and webinars. And then the member profile over in here, members and affiliates. Again, the members get full profiles. Affiliates just get a list. They're in a list. And then over here, resources and grants. Grants, resources, classes, certificates. Maybe we just call this resources. And they can see grants and resources, classes, and certificates. And within here, they can browse in each one of these by topic, or they can uh, browse by um, discipline, or also by uh, the type of uh, resource it is as well. Then down over here, we've got the secondary map, log in, become a member, contact us, media center, FAQs, and page. Now this is kind of like an explosion going off. When we're, you know, this we need to discuss and kind of figure out. Makes sense. I'm sure once we look at it, someone will say, well, this is missing. Where does it need to go? But this is our starting point right now with the taxonomy, with the site structure. For, and this is for the public site. I've also done one of these for the logged in member site as well. Now let's go to the member site. I'm confused about your navigation. You're giving me three different navigational structures here, and I'm not sure exactly what to do with it. I don't feel that people are going to navigate by discipline right here, and then all of a sudden you're putting master class, library, and conferences, and no one knows what a CEE looks like. Down here, what are these? Right in here. 
this is a waste of space right here. This needs to be a dashboard, okay? It needs to have news come to the front, and it also has, it, it should have your alerts if you program alerts, and again, that's V2, but that should be here. And it should boil up content that's specific to you. So that when you come in here, I should probably have also have a photo in your profile, your smiling face, and it's welcome, Jennifer, you know, so that, that's all right there. Oh, so like if Ellen yeah. is a member, She'd say, welcome guest me and her picture with her. Yeah. yeah, and her name and, and be very time. personalized. Yeah. <laughs> now, here. Okay, so you don't have a few all. If you're oh, this yeah. time, especially for, for those. Now, this, once you play with it, it works, okay? <laughs> But when you look at this right now, I have to, I think, okay, in order to do a search, I need to know the name, the country, the I state. Know. This all looks like it has to be pulled up. It doesn't. You could go on any one of these things and kind of find people. But if you look at this from a user perspective, you stop. You don't even look at because you don't even know what the name is. Number one, you're looking for someone who's in your various locations or in, in a particular uh, discipline. Now here, unfortunately, even though I, uh, I selected U.S. as my country, when I hit state, it gives me all of these instead of just the state. So it's not hinged, and that needs to be fixed so that it's just the state. Um, You're only in Ipswich. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's Ipswich in there, and Puri Smith, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, welcome to our lives. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> When I did get to the listing page and hit profile, I was not able to see, see a single profile in the one hit site. So. We, we were actually going to pull that find a member completely off, but that, even that got complicated, so yeah, I just yeah. left it. Well, yeah, I know you guys are you're, you guys are facing some real some real obstacles, yeah. so I'm totally sensitive to that. We could get people to fill them out, or when they fill them out, they never existed. Yeah. We're, we'll, we're just happy to right here, I'm in, where am I? You're I, in the learning tours, um, personal coaching is where you okay, are. Okay, there we go. And then I'm kind of confused, but these do not appear to me to be good navigational structures. Basics was new, top fix, good, good to great. And it looks like it's about results. They want topics here. They don't want, this is, this is not helpful. And then we're wasting a lot of room right here for an image. And when we go to the next one, we'll see your organizational structure. For these, these do not, there's, there's metaphors for listings on content. Um, they should have like the type, you know, the, the title, the type, a summary, you know, when it was published, all that stuff right here. I'm not sure what this is. I'm not even sure I clicked that. And I know there's some good stuff here because I did click it. And there's a great article. But this doesn't read to me like an article. Okay, they're supposed to, each one is supposed to be a multimedia, like, yeah. tutorial. So we may call them tutorials or something, but yeah. They're we, we've talked, hard. people really want certificates. We've talked about this. I'm confused about what that yeah, means. Yeah, that's very confusing. Right here, continuing education, they want courses. CEUs does not say that to anyone. I, 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 you know, that looked like some metaphor for me that you needed to have. Or something. When you come in here and you look at it, I mean, you've got some great courses. Get them out there, you know, because that's, if you had, if you tied your certificates to courses, that would be great. If you, you know, if you've um, taken so many courses. So there's ways to space on the homepage for the member site. Main site navigation deficiencies. We talked about this. Primary navigational structures. I'm not sure what they are. Piecemeal resources. You've sprinkled your resources across all the tabs, which is difficult to find. Uh, the member finder is difficult to use. Um, member profiles do not appear when you click them. And the sub navigation is obscure. Those, and there's a missing calendar. We need to have a calendar that's what's going on so that you can promote it. Some more things. Missing networking features. It's hard for them to speak to each other in network. Missing self-promotion resources. As I said, CEUs does not come out. 
uh, deficient content list pages, member certificates, master class. Now you have a lot of you've got a lot of these little brands running around, like master classes. What are they? Why not just courses? You know, so you have all these distinct brands. They're not helping you. Uh, figure out if you can't figure out from the second you looked at it what it is, then I would suggest. Yeah, yeah, make it simpler. Uh, and then uh, missing help systems, we, you need to have uh, a good piece. And also, um, yeah, you're, you're missing information about who you guys are once they've logged in. Please, you, you want to keep on reminding them about how, what a great decision they made in being members because you guys are terrific. Recommendations, homepage dash, dash, dashboard. We're suggesting an additive approach so that, and I'll show you what that means in a second, but um, conceptually it's when you log in, you get the whole public site plus additional features that you can have access to and your dashboard so that you know that you've accessed your material. But so all the stuff that you have on the marketing site is accessible to members. It's right there. So it's an additive approach. We're right, that's the approach we're rec recommending for this. And I'll show you how this kind of plays out in a second. Create new main navigation, and I'll show you the taxonomy. Use content filters for resources and profiles. Include self-promotion resources. Change series to courses. Um, oh yeah, uh, the, the, the deficient content list pages. Now, these things should be on your list of content. The title, the author, the format type, the summary, uh, topic, publication date, and discipline. Those should all be right there in the listing pages of, uh, of your different articles. Are you going to give an example of what that is? Because I actually can't visualize okay. it. Let's look at, um, it's when you go to any kind of a web page, let's think about um, the New York Times, when you go online. When you look at an article, when you go to a particular section, they'll have a list of their articles in that section. They'll have the title, they'll have a little bit of a summary, they'll have the publication date, and they have the author who wrote it, and they have a little link that says view article. That's what I'm targeting. Sometimes they're called table of Sometimes they're called listing pages. Sometimes they're called index pages. But those are, it's a very, it's, there's uh, best practices that are very well established for these pages. So we would do that for every article, every course? You would have all that time. information for each one of those, all of your resources. So that when you do, like when you're looking by topic, you would get a search return that would have the list. And you would have all that information that needed and what type it was on that topic. So if this is a video, this is an article, if this is a podcast, it's all right there. So that you get everything, you get the world uh, of your resources based on that particular topic. So if someone, Carol, were to search on a particular um, topic, this would, that search would generate for them whatever articles yeah. touch that topic, whatever videos, whatever podcasts, exactly. whatever master classes, and, and this is names. Yeah. 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 And this is even an easier way of thinking about it. You do a Google search, the return. It's the return page, is an index page. Okay. You know, so I should have thought about that immediately. Okay, I was wondering if it's just like internal Google. Yeah. <laughs> and then also uh, member certificates. You should reevaluate that. Uh, reevaluate your resource brands that you have. Um, just go simple. Don't don't brand them. Just say this is a course. Um, create a calendar. And include um, yours and and your partners or other people in the field. I'm not going to call their competitors. Okay, <laughs> include them in there. And um, include help systems and expand the profile so that uh, uh, you can have a lot more information about yourself. Add a discussion forum. Add a blog. Um, add my folder so you can save things to your folders and add alerts so that if you sign up for something, it'll written a little report or something. Um, you could even say, I want to be alerted with an email every time a particular topic is posted on your site that meets these parameters. That will happen. And, and don't worry, I would say that that would be V2 or V3, OK? <laughs> because that would be very complicated. Those are complicated systems. V2 and V3 are outside of our current scopes? Yes. yes. Okay. So let's look at it right here and what that. Remember before when I said that it was an additive kind of um, uh, organizational principle. So that when you log in, look, these are all the things that you have on the marketing site. Now within these, like resources, you 
Um, when you're not logged in, you only get the summaries. When you're logged in, you get the whole shebang right here. And that's a blog and discussion forum. And also, you have the profiles. So it's an additive approach. You can, um, the secondary navigation would be my profile, my stuff, which is I'm calling the folders, but just decided to call it my stuff. Blog out the content that's not being used in search. So that's your little taxonomy there. That way, when you teach yourself how to look at things in the marketing, the public site, when you go in, you can still find it. But there's more additional stuff across the dashboard that you have access to. Jim? Yeah. Quick question about the, the taxonomy. Um, I mean, I'm really liking the way you're basically framing it. I'm wondering, is it is it uh, possible that we would also be able, in addition to having this kind of taxonomy on the front page of the member site that we could have um, like a scrolling update news, the latest, oh, uh, like having a, a little video snippet from one of our webinars or something that's a real highlight of that month or something like that that scrolls across the top? I wouldn't do a scroll because that across the, but yeah, those materials up there that are relevant and newsworthy, yes, definitely. That's what I meant by a dashboard. So that you okay. can have those elements right there. And it's just a matter of like sitting down with, um, once we get into wireframes and actually start designing it, that's where we can start making those decisions about some of the content that can go over. Right. And we'll bring in the development people in, and they'll be able to tell us what, what can populate. But those are, those are great ideas, Jeff. So now I'm confused. This text on here, how is that different from the public site? Okay. These are not present. On the public side. On the public side. And within here, yeah. these resources, when you get there, you get the whole shebang. Okay. Instead of just the summary. Okay. And some of the other, like, in through here as well. Some of these things, like members and affiliates. And then you also can do your profile. And those things. Okay, so, great. So it's basically the same, but expanded. Yeah, it's That's, expanded, yeah. Okay. I would just say it's to limit the um, uh, scroll or video elements to dashboard, we've excluded it from prospective members and um, limited to members. But you can do that, but you can also, we're going to be changing the homepage for the public site too, so that right. if I, you I get something, something yeah, definitely. oh yeah, because you're going to have to make, because we're using a lot of the same kind of format, mm -hmm. you know, up there, we're going to have to make that a very visually distinct experience. So that dashboard is going to have to hit them right over the head. Say, oh my gosh, I've logged in and this is fantastic. These are, this is an enriched experience. But I still have access to all these things that I need as well. You know, so it's, it's an You're not experience. switching a whole navigation thing like where do you now? Yeah. Yes. Which is right. Now I'm going to show you some um, if this works. I've created a site map. That's going to be a little hard to <laughs> navigate here, but I'll try. Bear with me, guys. See if this works. So I've created a site map. This is a site map. This is the public site, and when you bring it down, the uh, the labels have a tendency to shrink and are not aligned correctly. So it looks much better when you actually see this in real instead of going through this, this bizarre conferencing thing. But um, these are the pages. And the sub-navigational structure. And up here, you can see the different types of templates we're using for pages. And again, you'll be able to read these once we send you the real one that's not going through GoToMeeting. And this is all um, squeezed up. Here is the unlogged homepage, the secondary navigation right here with the page types. And then the primary, primary navigation, right here, these are the main notes. And then the team profiles, full articles, full blogs, videos. And you can touch on those. I just have one uh, suggestion that I'm noticing um, that the uh, conference uh, seminars and webinars are all linked together. And I uh, think the conference um, is uh, one of a kind. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That merits its own 
sure. a navigational approach separate yeah. from the other. I think what I would do in that case is that you would hear the way I kind of envision it is you get the calendar, you get the conferences, you get the seminars and webinars. The conference, when you go there, that's going to be the majority of that page is going to be devoted to your primary thing. And also on the home page, there should be a big section of other conference because that's that's why you put I, I, that I guess I think the, the draw to the audience mm -hmm. is um, equal and distinctive for the conference as one yeah. entity and the um, oh, seminars, webinars, well, educational information as another. And no, those yeah. are equally weighted as opposed to subsets. There's there's some interesting ways that we can do that. Now, first of all, within this, and this is not each each conference gets its own page. And can get and can have a robust, we'll have a completely robust feature set on, on these pages right here. We can use that, that information can uh, be linked with a summary on the home page. It can be on the landing page for conferences and seminars, so you can go directly there. But also, we need to think of these as being landing pages for your marketing efforts. We, so that, let's say that you do an email campaign, you send them a link to this page right here. It's great because it's going to bring them into your whole world because they're going to see this around navigation. But this is the way that you can market and have your both ways. So that you can market it through the site, you can market it separately. And that's why each conference should have its own page that's really robust and beautiful and a landing page. And it, you can have accordions, it can have sub pages to it as well. We'll just look at the feature set and see what we need to do there. Does that make sense to you? Just that? Uh, what, uh, what you're saying, of course, makes sense. I'm yeah. trying to make it different distinction, which is okay. that the conference is one of the main draws, mm -hmm. and the um, uh, seminars and the webinars are another of the main draws, and rather than having them hierarchical in, in one set of um, pages that you may want to separate those, because those are the ones that are drawing okay. the member okay. um, uh, enrollment. Do you know what you could do? You could bring this up to the top. So that it's like a calendar is out there, right? But the second one is the name of your, your big conference, right? So that's the granddaddy of them all. And the other one can be other conferences. Yeah. So that it's right there. Um, and you go over it, you, you'll, you'll kind of, I'm envisioning you'll go, um, you'll scroll or you'll, um, you'll, you'll mouse over the main tab and they'll all come down and you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to see that immediately. So even if you're not on the home page where it's mentioned, when you're going through and looking at conferences, it's right there. You click and you'll be able to go there instantly. So anywhere on the site, it's one click away. Does that does that help? I'm hoping yeah, I think they're there. getting, yeah, we can yeah. go. We'll look yeah, at I'm, it. I'm not sure at what level we dive in right yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. This is like a bunch of questions. <laughs> yeah. Grants yes. and resources. Like, yeah. Lots of little yeah. things. But yeah. I'm Here's the member side now. And this, but again, this is totally. Um, here, what I've done is I've made a distinction between this is the affiliate resources and this is the full member resources right here. So I've used the two boxes to kind of show what the differences are and how it's additive. And then again, the about us is the same, the coaching primer, all the stuff that you saw before, I kind of shrunk into a little box right there so that you could see the rest of it. So you and can that see still, is You can still see it, yes, on the... It's like um, just the top navigation. It would, would be, be yeah. what the secondary navigation is. Well, what you're talking see about? what I'm saying uh, right here is that because I couldn't fit the whole thing on the page that you yeah. can see. Yeah. These are actually would look exactly like these. I just okay, that's got it. And they're the same time. They're the same content. And again, it doesn't look like this when you look at the, the whole thing that was in the trunk down. So um, that is. Let's go back. So where is, for example, our entire library, all of our journals? Yeah. It's under the resources. Okay. It shouldn't be with grants, but right. we'll talk about that later. Grants should, doesn't need to be in the member side. In resources, okay. okay. If that's details we'll get to. If this could be just resources then right here. Yeah. And right now, I've got them under the resources. There's an index, there's a filter, there's articles, blogs, videos, podcasts, conferences, seminars, webinars, because you want them to be in there as well. 
you would want these pages to be in your resources in addition to the conferences as well, so that you're slicing so you're it double, down. Yeah, yeah. cross-referencing. Which is, you know, a lot of people say, oh no, you know, one thing has to be in one spot and only that spot, no websites don't work that way. You, you want to make sure that it's coming to you, you know, so that the, the content is coming to you. Now I'm sure we'll have a lot more to look at this. Yeah, one, again, this may not be the discussion for now, but given how much everybody is talking about the journal articles, et cetera. So, yeah, actually, let me go, go back Sorry. to where you were. There we go. So, up there, you have articles, blogs, grants. On, oh, oh, these are the, the templates. Those are just the templates. We'll that, the same. that shows you the colors I wanted to, yeah, so yeah. that you can see what templates we're going to be using. So they're kind of color match. We talk about creating ten templates. If Lenny, uh, Lenny will let me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's usually Jim. <laughs> yeah, I, I think some of them are well. To, to, be to me, they're honest. different. For her, it would be. Yeah, yeah. just because in some in some instances, some things it just for their instance, right? Yeah. So like articles and events is what. And then I got down here, also the, the footer elements. And over here, on page elements, we always want to make sure that your call to action is, you know, newsletter sign up, become a member sign up, and also share. You know, we want them to share the pages, as well as access over here your social media pages as well. Okay. And again, this is a lot to take in. So I think I go back. So based on all that you've heard and all the research that you've collected, the three most important things we need to deliver to our members are? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, you need to change your membership levels. You need to consolidate your brand. Um, and you need to fix how you go to market with your resources, your, your tagging and your navigation to the resources that, you're, that, that are available. Those are the three top things. Okay, that's sort of fixing, but what are, what are the three most important things? She's talking about the draws. Yeah, the draws. Like what? Oh, what oh, people yeah. are coming to. Yeah, what do okay. they really, really this want? This is fascinating. Okay, that's really good. Okay, so remember the survey? Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I forget. Thanks, Peru. In the survey, remember how they wanted resources, resources, resources so much? Okay, but then when we started talking, they kept on saying, well, yeah, I want resources, but would I go to your website for resources? No, I do a search on a topic search, it doesn't matter where I go, I'll be able to evaluate the materials at, you know, for each site. So all of a sudden they were thinking the, the value of resources on your site became less and promotion became bigger, okay? So self-promotion self and networking all of a sudden became bigger and much networking. more important. Yeah. So, so you guys have to have the resources because that's what's gonna bring them to your website, okay? If they do, uh, Google search, looking for a particular topic or a resource, and they come to your site, fantastic, that's what you want them to do. And also, that's their primary concern. Now, but they're going to be very agnostic about their resources. They're not going to be agno as agnostic about their self-promotion. And you guys, that's where your competitive advantage is because of your brand associations. You guys being able to um, market yourself through you guys is much better than anyone else right now in the market. So you've got to take advantage. And when our conversations were going, that's what they were saying. All of a sudden, I can get resources anywhere. I love your resources. You need to have them, but I really want to use you for self-promotion. Affiliation. Jim? Affiliation, yes. Yeah. A uh, question along those lines. Did you find um, any substantial amount of people looking for professional membership as a coach, like that that's becoming important to them the way a psychologist wants to be a member of the American Psychological Association? They, you know, the association is really, yes, they do kind of want that. That's, that's what the International Federation is giving them, you know, because of their programs. That's what they're getting from, from them. So that, that is are getting important. their credentialing, yes. basically, yeah. is what... So what I think what yeah, I... Yeah, no, but I'm not talking about credentialing. Okay. We don't get, as a member of the APA, you don't get a credential other than to be able to say you're a member of 
of the APA, and you know, then there there are other levels that you can join beyond that. But you know, in the profession of being a psychologist, once you're a licensed psychologist, it's considered just part of your professional development to become a member of the American Psychological Association, and then to move on from there into you know different levels of of uh, activity. And I'm wondering whether coaches are getting to that point where they're thinking about being part of a, of a professional association. And I'm a little concerned. I, I, I basically agree with what Margaret is saying, that we should be collaborative with ICF. But I also am concerned that we want to not be cognizant of the fact that people are thinking of ICF as the membership association. And I think we want to change that. I think it, we want it to be us. Um, not necessarily in competition with them, but I think we should we would be remiss if we didn't promote membership and professional growth in the association somehow. So I'm just curious where people came out on that. It sounds like from your data collection that they do think of ICF before they think of us. For that particular thing, yes. I think if you were to give them legitimacy, if you were to give them a membership level that made sense and that they could promote themselves with, and that would be a badge of, of something, a, a, a validator, I think that would be, that would, that's what they're looking for. So we haven't lost them completely yet. No, they, they really value your, like I said before, they really value you as an organization and your affiliations. So it's just a matter of taking advantage of that and, and, uh, and taking advantage, well, basically taking advantage of it, yeah. Yeah, that's very, I think that's really important because I know for myself, I stopped being a member of ICF once I started to really see, I mean, even before I became part of the team, when I started to see what the real resources were available with the Institute of Coaching. But before that, the only professional association that I thought of was ICF. Okay. So I think there is, a, there is an important, again, I don't want to get into the competition thing, but I think it's a really important thing that we have to keep in mind that we want to be the association that people join. Um, Margaret here, I agree with Jeff, and I also think ICF is, is providing very different things. They're, they have a magazine which has good stuff, but it's, it's, not, um, it's not as lightweight as it used to, but it's, it's not coaching science. And it obviously, it just, it, these are different resources with different, for people of different agendas. And, um, and we really own the domain around the science and the, the integrity and the brand. And, and I think we just need to make sure, I mean, I think it would be good for the, for people to want both for different reasons, because they are, they do, we deliver very different experiences and very different resources. And we just need to keep should make sure that we're differentiating. Um, and I, I, Jeff, I'm wondering, you know, being a member of the Institute of Coaching is, seems like a higher order than being a member of a professional association. You know, it's part of a nonprofit Harvard Institute that has a big agenda. It's really more about, I'm just trying, I'm looking, searching for the right words, but it's, um, Margaret, it's being- a little louder, I can't hear you. Okay, hang on, let me just put this. I've got it at the top. Um, I wonder if I can do something. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're loud and clear. Margaret, can you say something again? Hello? Yeah, Is we can hear Jeff good? much better than you for some reason. Yeah, because I'm I'm on my top speaker here. I wonder if it's a, at the other end. Oh hang on, let me Probably see. because I'm using a headset. Are you using a headset? No, or? I'm not. I'm not. I'm just in my office. Yeah. No. Jeff is like, yeah. it's sorry, not I'll, I'll stick closer. Yeah. So I'm just saying, um, I think we, I think we're something different than a professional association. I think it's something about supporting the cause of science, being affiliated with the integrity of the brand. So I'm, I don't know what the words are, but it feels like it's more than that. Being a member of something you know, kind of like the way, you know, it's very prestigious to be a member of the Institute of Medicine. Um, some of the more academic societies, you know, so anyway, so I'm not sure what the right words are, but I think there's room for both because I think ICF is, 
is providing very different kinds of resources. Yeah, I mean, I tend to agree with that. I think, though, that there's a whole constituency out there, especially in the leadership coaching area, that is torn between ICF and the Institute of Coaching because, you know, they're interested in the science, but it's um, as an underpinning, but it doesn't necessarily promote their practice. Yeah. So the Institute of Coaching is a draw on the one end in terms of credibility and in terms of advancing the evidence-based um, foundation for coaching. But then ICF is really more the professional viewed as more like the membership group. Right. And when you go to their meetings as a leadership coach, you find that it's mostly life coaches. Right. So for most of the leadership coaching folks, they feel like a fish out of water or else they're attacked to, for people wanting to become a leadership coach. So I, I agree with you. I just think that we need to leverage what we have to make sure that we pull in people that are looking. I think that what Jim is touching on is really, really important. This ad, He's using the word advocacy, mm -hmm. um, coaching primers. I really like that stuff. I think that, that that's that plus the research underpinnings, the science underpinnings, are what will really become the draw for people to want to be a member of the Institute of Coaching. And I agree, we don't have to have the professional association part. I totally agree with that. Yeah, I mean, one thing in case it's helpful, you know, being around the folks at the ICF Coaching Science Course uh, Conference compared to our own, you know, in adult development terms, they're way more in the socialized mind category. They're way more cultish. They're way more, you know, they're less questioning of science. They're less curious. They're, I mean, intellectually curious. It's a, it's really a different, it's a level of intellectual sophistication that's a good level below us. And I think that's how the market's going to, um, going to segment that we're going to, uh, uh, and the leadership coaches for sure are in the higher level. They're more critical. They're more demanding. They're more, um, thoughtful, they're, you know, they're just a higher order of being. So I do see that difference there. And I think we just need to make sure that we speak to the group that are at that higher level, which I think we do. I mean, I think that's, that's where we're at. Um, there's, there's one other thing that, that seems to be missing here, which um, maybe it's implicit. Um, but when I was listening to the focus groups, everybody was mentioning, I want articles that connect research to what I can do with every, every group. They said something about that. So I'm wondering how to feature that on here, question number one. Question number two is when Laurel has looked at what our most visited web pages are, it tends to be positive psychology and the conference. So just how to, as we do this, how to kind of stay true to that request and also how to capitalize on what's working now in terms of well, where people go. I, the best case scenario for me would be all your articles have practical applications written right into them. Because why would you, why would you publish research without actually having an impact? As an organization, I think that the articles themselves did that because uh, to have a, a special part in the taxonomy of that practical application doesn't make sense because everything should have a concept or But we can't, we can't do that because what we do is we have a journal article. Mm -hmm. It's a complete PDF. Okay. End of story. You, you can't attach anything to it. So we're not producing the article to already publish it. These are, act, these are like... But I'm sure you have some like other articles that comment on them or you can have a blog that would be about that. Someone could you know, if this came out in the professional journal, this yeah. is what I think about yeah. it. But and sort of maybe an organized, okay, but I, I, the concern I have is that, and, and maybe this won't be an issue with members, is that our, our library is a big draw. Mm -hmm. A lot of when we've done surveys, they talk about that, but it's very hidden mm -hmm. in what we have. Yeah. So in terms of what, anyway, that was just one, Tell, tell us just so we have a big picture of where we go from here, since none of yeah. us, at least since I don't have no idea. So we have the sounds like we still need to understand it, digest it a little bit more. And then 
what's sort of on our plate to do and how yeah. do we yeah. work forward so we know where we're going and can be most effective? Well, typically a, a, a site map or a primary site, you know, the first draft of a site map will kind of get you somewhere in the ballpark. It gives you more concepts. So that's what you did in these. So that's yeah. Now, yeah. what we need to do next is start actually putting some wireframes together because all of a sudden, with that, it's, it's very abstract until you can kind of see it in some kind of formats. Mm -hmm. So that's what we'll start doing is, is roughing out some wireframes. And can, can you explain wireframes in lay terms? Black and white dummies of the pages okay. that have like usually gray boxes uh, with labels on them. With um, some more Gibson, which is just sample dummy text for it, and they'll have a button, you know, that that's, uh, you know, that will, uh, and we do them, we do our wireframes, these these dummies, in a tool that's called Asher, so they'll be prototyped and they'll be clickable, so that when you look at a button, you click, and you will be able to go to see that page. So it's not just flat pages. Um, we could actually take these, and we've done this in a lot of cases. Is we've taken these kind of black and white or gray scale prototypes and actually tested with them with people to see what their feedback was if they made sense. So that will kind of give you a clue. And it'll also start revealing, like when you use a drop down, if you're doing a drop down filter, we can put the elements in the drop down so you know what you're filtering on in a wireframe. So that all of a sudden you're using it and you'll be able to figure out if it makes sense. So that's, that's kind of what the next steps are. I think also, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, but um, also like seeing these um, site maps, I think there were some things that came up where you had said, you know, maybe grants don't go with resources, yeah. things like that, um, or bringing up conferences. I think those kinds of things we can, we'd love to get your feedback on because then we can update yes. the, the, the site map. Um, I think what Jim was alluding to is like once you get into the wireframes, there might be things that come up that you say, oh, you know what, we should. Put that into our sitemap or we should move stuff around now that I'm seeing it, it I don't know if it quite makes sense but the sitemap should feel like it's sort of like 90% there right okay so we definitely need to review this as a group yes. before you yes. proceed usually usually what happens is you review it and then you have a list of questions like where okay it is, where okay it is, how does this move? Okay. yeah exactly so then we would go Sorry, back no that's yeah. right we would go back we would you know we would have a conversation with you probably have a call or we yeah. would meet go over what yeah i think we have a meeting right mm -hmm. yes i can yeah and so we could go over that we would make those revisions make sure they're you know what you want um then sort of dive into the wireframing part of it that jim was talking about so you know starting probably with um the home page and some of the key pages um, yeah possibly like the landing pages those top level pages yeah. um, that Jim had outlined, and um, they basically kind of map out what are we thinking in terms of content that's going to go on there, do you have that content, are you going to write it, for example, like um, all that kind of information, we would, on the wireframes, we'd go sort of contextually relevant call-outs, right, if you're on a certain page, is there something else that you want to pull in there, those kind of things are kind of what we've been talking about, and what that experience would be for the different use cases that Jim yeah. has already outlined as part of the so, You'll be able to see some page hierarchy, so when you look at the page, you know, like, or this page. Okay. The hierarchy is right now. You know, you have one thing, yeah, one thing that um, Dave showed me on, I think it was the um, Gazette paper. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so we had the, the regular navigation yeah. Or the site, and then they wanted to teach us something, so it was like a second tier mm -hmm. on top. And I thought that would be a really great way mm -hmm. to highlight the conference. And the conference is so it's where we can get Harvard again, sure. And and it's right, yeah, it's our entree. And I, I don't know, does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, was he talking about like on the home page? Yeah, on the whole page, page. Like it features um, an article or features of yeah. the item? Okay. Yeah, I think so. I'll have to ask sure. him, but it was, I thought it was a really cool idea that you could have that put to leadership at Harvard Medical School. Okay. You know, our mm -hmm. Harvard Medical School sure. conference, click here, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. All right. Good. So it sounds like we need to work on our mission, <laughs> and, right, still? Yeah. And what the hell do you do anyway? And, and, and our membership level, because you can't really go forward with this until we are right. clear, yes. right? <laughs> and then we need to review the site now. Yes. Yeah. 
So why don't we, uh, Margaret or somebody is typing and we can hear you're typing really loudly. Is that right? Just not me. Up. What? Margaret, Jeff, somebody, Stephanie, somebody's typing and we can hear you. Yeah, uh, I'm not typing. I don't okay. know. I sound, oops, I just heard it again. So somebody's still typing and we hear you. That, um, I think I'm going to have to take a bathroom break. Okay. Yeah. This is yes. what yeah. we have in mind to present today. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> I don't, no, at just some point, I don't know if now is the time, but I, I'm wondering if we um, want to speak up a little bit about how we all feel about going, like taking out one of our membership things, like, you know, doing the equivalent of removing members. Does that sound, I'm just curious, does that sound, that sounds okay to me. I'm just wondering if, if you guys have particular thoughts about that. We had some other titles at one point. Remember it was like yeah, executive but, but member. About yeah. The point now is just taking one out. Does that does that hit Jeff, you or you, Margaret, um, in any I, 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 Are you saying we want to take out the, oh, hang on. I muted myself. Um, are, they, are you saying that you want to take off the website the profiles that have no photo? No, no. no. Not at all. In fact, we're going to add. No, okay, what, sorry. what is the, I'm, again, this may not be the time to do it, but one of the big recommendations is we have three levels of members now. The recommendation is go to two. Yes. So you have the affiliate and whatever the fancy people are called. Is that feeling okay to everybody? I'm actually, I'm actually seeing it as a transitional period so that we would ultimately continue to have founding fellows, but we would change what it means to be a founding fellow. Okay. And, that, then, that's and then we would grandfather, we would probably grandfather the people that are founding fellows. That could be, that could be a process. And then ultimately only have two memberships that you can buy. And the third level, the founding fellow level, is something you have to apply for. And you have to actually, you know, go through whatever our vetting process is. But that way we would not have to do away with our founding fellows. No, we're talking, well, right now I'm not agreeing that we get rid of the name and word fellows for now. I'm just talking about... Oh, but it, it sounds like you guys agree, like if we had something like affiliates, forgetting about names in particular, but like affiliates and fellows, and that's it. That sounds so, okay to you guys. That's fine with me. That's fine with me. Okay. And Jeff, that sounds fine with you? I'm a little confused. I thought that Jim was recommending that we have affiliates and members. No, he's Come using on. members not as the word member. He's using the word only as low scale, upscale. He's not using the word, he's nodding as I'm talking. He's, he's, not, he's not saying that. He's okay, so two confused. categories and not three categories. Maybe another way of saying it would be affiliate and full member. Would be or professional member we have or something. Just, yeah. yeah, just simple and fancy. The only problem I see is we have two price points. One is $100 or $150 and the other is $1,000. And right. how much are you gaining or losing by eliminating the 500 zone? Well, we always have fewer at the 500 point, and we could do something like grandfather them in. Like for one year, you become a fancy pants, even though you've only paid for medium pants, and and then gone it. We'll right. have that's we'll we that, do that. That's, that's totally Okay, um, with everything we've presented so far, guys. Um, well, Laurel is saying, let's take a five minute break. But then I was thinking when we come back, do you want to give your feedback? Well, we can wait a bit. About, we can probably all. Does anybody else need to take a break? Yes, how long are we going? Yeah, if we 5.30. Can... I think that's too long. I have a question about what we're trying to accomplish now. Because I actually am very, I'm really happy with everything that's been done. And it seems yeah. to me that we have to go offline and do a lot of work on our own. So I'm not sure what are we going to do for yeah. the next 50 minutes. Okay. I just didn't know if you had, this was time for questions and comments. So as you think back over the various recommendations or what the site map looks like, is there any feedback or we, we just haven't heard from you in terms of like an overview comment, if you had any. Yeah, Margaret here, I'm thrilled. 
Uh, Me too. Beautiful presentation. I love the three, um, the three personas. It really, I think, it really does capture um, okay. what we're what we're dealing with. Um, I think it's a beautiful job. I, I think we just, I can't wait to see to get all these resources all organized to address these. I think it, it just makes you realize. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what is that? Yeah, we'll have to, maybe we'll take a retreat together. Um, all right, so everyone's pleased. Um, your assignment, should you choose, no, you have to accept, <laughs> is to, to tweak the mission, right? No, um, that's our job. That's right, that's, that's what I'm saying. We're, we're, we're talking, talking to, to you. Us. Yeah, us, the IOC. Okay. Um, we need the PowerPoint slides sent not everyone has is invited to this KB base camp. camp. Yeah, so what we'll do is oh, sure. we'll yeah. turn them into PDFs because it's key keynote, which is not everyone else. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do PDFs. PDF it, yeah. And um, I will send out a link that uh, for because the site map is actually web, a website that oh, is okay. the title, so that you can go and click that one. Yeah. And so we need people to, because we're meeting in two weeks, correct? I have a meeting on the 24th. Is that a mistake? So, um, oh. yeah, so I'm just going to go over, yeah. just quickly yeah. go over milestones. So this is Jen speaking. Um, so there we go. Um, so as a project manager, it's going to be my responsibility to kind of keep everything moving between yeah. your team and my team. Um, and as I mentioned, this is my one of my first projects in the world. So Steph and I are going to be tag teaming a little bit as well. I get up to speed on sure. just processes here. I've done a lot of side site launches before in my career, um, but this is my first year. So um, she and I will be tag teaming at that. That said, feel free to contact me with anything. And if I don't know the answer, I will find that out. Um, but so the plan is for June 24th, we did have a meeting scheduled to go over the taxonomy and the site map which we just actually did. So I think um, the plan for that is for you guys to have, you know, kind of take some time, come back with feedback in the next week or so. Um, and then by that point, we'll be in a good spot to have that finalized to then go into the wireframe discussion, which is scheduled for July 8th. Okay, so what we're saying is the June 24th meeting is canceled. Essentially. Essentially, yeah. We, I think we, we, can we use it. We will we'll cancel it for us. <laughs> yeah, so we can use that time to kind of to work on feedback and, yeah. and so this get is, everything into a good spot. Okay, so this is now IOC C only regarding OHO. And then we're meeting Friday of that week as a anyway, group. Anyway, yeah. And um, so we can then make next week. I think we have some, Focus a on lot less. of important things to discuss. And yeah. We're, yeah. So, um, <laughs> Jeff and or Margaret, do you have the June 24th meeting on your calendars? I, yes. I did, but I'm away. I'm in Minneapolis, so I'm, I can't be there. Okay. Jeff, is it on your calendar to meet from 1 to 3 on June 24th? Yes, it is. Okay. So the at least the three of us will meet on the on the telephone or whatever um okay great and then we'll meet as a full group on the 27th of june and so when when do you need i need a deadline date for feedback for your taxonomy i mean I your eyes you know, like schedule and stuff okay. so we just need to our our on. next meeting with mm -hmm. you guys then is, is july, july 8th July. yeah July Knowing 8th. that July 4th is a, a big holiday week. So did we have July 8th as us delivering? Yes. Yes. Us okay. Delivering. Deliverable, yeah. Can you say that again? So the it's July 8th their, meeting is, is their delivering to us. So I need to delivering know what? Wire frames. Wire frames. So okay. what? So what we need to know is what are all the things you need for us? We need a detailed to-do list. Carol needs a detailed right. to-do list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like in terms of in order, because just to orient me, like in order for us to deliver the wireframes, yeah. we must know what works, what does not work with 
our site Taxo app. Yeah, and the type what, what yeah. here, okay, now how do we communicate some of that with you between now and then? Because how can you deliver it if you yeah. haven't heard the feedback? Right. But not through a meeting. So it doesn't make sense to have I would some say preliminary feedback about that on the 24th, if you have it, or? Well, what I'd like to see is maybe just a list of, of comments and questions that you would have, and that we'll see, see how close we are to see if that is necessary. Right. Because it could be just, you know, get rid of this, 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 and it's like, oh, that was easy. You know, or it could to be. see if what meeting is necessary. Uh, if we did another meeting in which we're talking about the site map. Okay. And that so, would be a home meeting or something. So the one that to the July, June twenty fourth meeting. What, what week are we? That's, That's in one week. week. Yeah. yeah, we can't turn around that. We can't turn anything around that quickly. Okay. So, um, is it possible then? Do we want to maybe have our some kind of phone meeting with you all after our June twenty seventh meeting? Because that's when we will have sure. feedback. And that might mean that the July 8th meeting, I don't know if that will be a little too close. So I think the July 8th meeting should be the feedback meeting when we fall. It sounds like yeah, it sounds it like we have to be July, July Just because out. July yeah. 4th, I'm gone like yeah. three days. A lot of people are gone that yeah. week. And I think that's yeah. that's good. So the delivery wireframes will be another we'll time. So this yeah, is we'll now this is Thank you, now um, OHO. Full feedback. Right. So July eighth um, will be more feedback on the site map. Okay. Yes, we will provide you with feedback. And we will have feedback for you before. So hopefully we'll do like an iteration before then. No, no, no. 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 You're delivering a UI July eighth. Delivering yeah. what? UI design. If, um, the water frames. I'm you just changed that. No, we're just gonna push You that just out. changed that. I did. Yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're saying the you feedback. Oh, yes. Yes. So, we're, there's, so there's, no there's no 24. There's no 24. There's no 24th, and on the 8th is the deadline. The, 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 the 8th feedback. is when we'll the wireframe. Oh, yeah, that's right, because we're meeting the 27th and the next week is July. So 4th. on the 20th, on the, on the 8th. Got it. Okay. Yes, I think we got it. What, what yeah. time is the thing on the 8th? Okay. On the 8th, we'll be doing feedback regarding the site map so we can hear it all straight from you and figure out what you need and then we'll go back, we'll update yeah. and if, give you what you need. If you've got a consolidated list of questions for people, feel free to put yeah. them on basic oh, sure. response. We'll yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. What we'll do is after our meeting on the 27th, we'll probably have a whole bunch of okay. comments, okay. questions, so We could do another round on the site map. Um, okay. So, so based on that, we're going to end up moving the wireframe deliverable. Okay. Two. Which makes sense. But but we need to get on Carol's. Yeah. What's that? Carol's calendar for the wireframe deliverable. Yep. Yeah, so oh yeah. Wireframe when? Why don't we just do that now? If we're all yeah. together. Margaret and Kate. I want to. We want to go back and regroup and make sure we have resources and maps to schedule. So we just want to double check that. Because they're multi projects, so they just. They've got people very managed. <laughs> Unlike us. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we just need All to right. regroup, but we'll get that to you as soon as yeah. possible. Yeah, because we know your schedule where it's all you know, There's a lot of people and your time is important, so we'll keep that out. All right, so um, we have. So are you guys canceling the 8th of July? I'm a little confused. No. No, 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 no nothing's canceled. Topic. Yeah. Nothing is canceled. Deliverables and discussions are modified. I see. Okay. Yeah. So what it is, Jeff, is um, originally we were do our homework and get it to them and get them able to change that into wireframes by the seventh. So we we just postponed that meeting and replaced it. With another with what? We post, we post so on June twenty fourth, we're meeting without OHO to review. Um, yeah, I, get, I got that. We got that. Then July eighth, we're meeting with OHO. I because we already have that sure. to, for site map feedback, probably virtually. I don't know if yeah, we need yeah, to meet. Probably virtually. But we can come 
need to do. Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think in person. Yeah, oh, sure. Okay. Okay. And then, then we need another meeting for the UI. Yeah, for wire wireframe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And okay. and then we have we do have another July meeting though, right? Or was it August? Um, I don't have any other OHO meetings scheduled. July 30th. July 30th. Oh, I don't have that one. What time is it? 2 to 4. Do you guys have that? Or could you switch that now based on? So that's going to be the wireframes? Yeah, because I think Steph had set up the schedule based on, based on what she thought would work out, not coming in. Yeah, you know, it's partly availability. Sure. Yeah, of yeah. everyone and everyone's yeah. part. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, July thirtieth. Um, I thought there was a. There's no other meeting between July eighth and July thirtieth. Yeah. Okay, so that we could bump up the wireframes. To. to that yeah. 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 So yeah. We can take a look at that. Yeah. Just confirm once we get up and Yeah. Because then you come in with the art after the wireframes, right? So and that's, after, yeah. So and we wanted to do that before Carol went on vacation, which is in August. August. Yeah. So we could probably have the creative kick off then, and then yeah, the thirtieth. That's what we were thinking. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So let's let's just like regroup. Yeah. And make sure that yeah. So that was going to be the yeah, creative yeah, yeah. kick off, okay. and she was going to do the second revision with okay. the creative. And so if you need a second wireframe, we should try and do it between. Yeah. So usually the what eight. we do is we start the visual design process. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just wondering if Margaret and Jeff, as we talk about these kind of stuff, if they want to stay on with us or if we're now in post meeting rather than meeting. Should I stop this recording? Please. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay.